dear students in this video we are going to continue our chapter organic chemistry some basic principle and techniques so far we have completed these eight topics so let's proceed to the ninth topic qualitative analysis of organic compounds okay so first of all what do we mean by qualitative analysis okay so in qualitative analysis we try to find out which of the elements are present in the organic compound so in this video we will see the techniques how we are going to detect carbon and hydrogen and then how we are going to detect all other elements present in the organic compound like nitrogen sulfur halogen or phosphorus so first of all let's proceed with detection of carbon and hydrogen the method is very simple what we are going to do is we will take up the sample of organic compound and we are going to heat it in the presence of copper oxide okay so what is going to happen is that this will act as a catalyst and it is going to oxidize the carbon present in the compound to carbon dioxide okay so whatever the carbon is present it will be oxidized to carbon dioxide now we have to run a test to ascertain whether whatever gas is formed is carbon dioxide or not so the test for carbon dioxide is lime water test so what we are going to do is we are going to pass this gas in lime water so if lime water turns milky or there is a turbidity so it ascertains that carbon dioxide gas was there okay and this milky is because of the turbidness of calcium carbonate calcium carbonate is insoluble and it is white in color and because of this there will be turbidity in the water if we pass on more carbon dioxide then this turbidity will be removed and that is because the calcium carbonate will convert into calcium bicarbonate and because of this the turbidity will be removed because calcium carbonate is insoluble but calcium bicarbonate is soluble in water next whatever hydrogen was present in the compound that will be oxidized to water so we have to now confirm that whatever the compound is formed is water or not so its simple test is put some anhydrous copper sulfate anhydrous copper sulfate is white in color okay when you put it in water then it turns blue that copper sulfate will absorb some water and it will turn into blue color so copper sulfate dot 5h2o these are the water of crystallization okay so in any crystals there are some void spaces so like there are some molecules of copper sulfate in the crystal and there are some void spaces okay in this void spaces the water molecule will sit there and because of that this is known as water of crystallization okay so each of the copper sulfate molecule is going to have five water of crystallization okay next now we are going to detect other elements like nitrogen sulfur halogen chlorine bromine iodine we are not going to do test for fluorine okay and then for the phosphorus and the name for the test is lesange test okay what we are going to do in this test is we are going to heat the organic compound in presence of sodium metal okay and on heating the carbon and nitrogen will give you sodium cyanide sulfur will give sodium sulfide and respective halogens will give other sodium chloride sodium bromide or sodium iodide that is halide of sodium okay and then we are going to extract this 
fused mass by boiling it with distilled water and this extract is known as sodium fusion extract and after that we are going to run a series of tests and then we will certain whether nitrogen was present or sulfur or halogen or phosphorus was present we can get that so first let's run test for nitrogen so what we are going to do is we will take up the sodium fusion extract and we will boil it with iron sulfate FeSO4 okay remember the formula for the compounds then we are going to acidify it with concentrated sulfuric acid sulfuric acid formula is H2SO4 okay and if we get a Prussian blue color then it confirms that nitrogen was present okay and this Prussian blue color is because of the cyanide ion okay so in this reaction first of all the sodium cyanide will react with iron sulfate to form sodium hexacyanoferrate this is an complex compound okay and you are going to learn about this complex compound in coordination chemistry in organic chemistry topics okay so this cyanide will come from sodium fusion and this Fe2 plus ion will come from iron sulfate this will form a complex sodium hexacyanoferrate okay whatever the charge is there it will be balanced by sodium Na4 Fe Cn whole 6 this is not a normal compound it is a complex compound okay we'll study in coordination compounds okay so when we are going to heat it with concentrated sulfuric acid then some of the iron ions Fe plus 2 will be oxidized because sulfuric acid is concentrated sulfuric acid is an oxidizing agent so it will oxidize some of the Fe2 plus ion to Fe plus 3 the higher oxidation state so they are oxidized and it will give a precipitate okay so the sodium ions will be replaced and it will give a precipitate and the color of the precipitate will be Prussian blue so it will confirm the presence of cyanide ion so since cyanide ion is present so it will also confirm the presence of nitrogen okay and the name for this compound is iron hexacyanoferrate or feriferocyanide okay you will study about the naming in coordination compound for which we will make a video later next test for sulfur there are two tests okay let's take up the first test so we are going to take up the sodium fusion extract and we will acidify it with acetic acid formula CH3COOH okay and add to it lead acetate that is PB CH3 COO hold twice okay and if we get a black precipitate of lead sulfide then it confirms the presence of sulfur okay so sulfide will come from fusion extract if the compound has got sulfur in it okay and lead will come from lead acetate and it will give you a black precipitate so this confirms the presence of sulfur let's proceed to next test what we are going to do is we will take up the sodium fusion extract and treat it with sodium nitroprusside okay it is also a complex Fe Cn whole 5 NO and whole minus 2 okay and if a violet color appears then it indicates the presence of sulfur okay so these were the two tests now we have to have some precaution like if nitrogen and sulfur both are present in the organic compound then we are going to get sodium nitrocyanate okay we are not going to get sodium cyanide or sodium sulfide we are going to get sodium thiocyanate okay so since free cyanide ions are not present so that is not give, going to give the prussian blue color 
okay so we have to be very cautious look here nitrogen is present but still it is not giving the previous test of prussian blue color so before ruling out we have to ascertain whether sodium thiocyanate is being formed or not okay so if sodium thiocyanate will be formed then instead of this blue color you will get a blood red color okay because of this thiocyanate ion so if blood red is color is there then we have to run further test okay so what we are going to do is we'll take up the sodium fusion extract and we are going to heat it with excess of sodium so when we heat it with excess of sodium then sodium thiocyanide will decompose into sodium cyanide and sodium sulfide okay and these two ion will give their respective test of the cyanide or sulfide okay so be very careful while ruling out the presence of nitrogen if we are not getting prussian blue color next test for halogen okay so we will take up the sodium fusion extract okay and we will acidify it with nitric acid hno3 and after that we are going to treat it with silver nitrate agno3 this is hno3 okay so we will get some halide of silver we are representing the halide with symbol x so it could be either chloride bromide or iodide okay uh, we don't take up the fluoride test okay it is pretty complicated so we are generally taking this test only for chloride bromide and iodide so if it is white precipitate and it's soluble in sodium hydroxide formula nh4oh so if it is a white precipitate and soluble in sodium hydroxide that means it is silver chloride so agcl is there because color of agcl is white and it is soluble in ammonium hydroxide so we confirmed the presence of agcl so chloride was there in the sodium fusion extract that means chlorine was there in the organic compound similarly if we get yellowish precipitate okay then it could be either silver bromide or silver iodide if it is sparingly soluble partially soluble in ammonium hydroxide that means it is silver bromide so in our organic compound there will be bromine okay and if it is insoluble that means it is silver iodide so in our organic compound iodine was present next test for phosphorus so what we are going to do is firstly we will heat our compound with an oxidizing agent here we are going to do take up the sodium peroxide formula na2o2 okay we will take up the sodium peroxide and we will heat it with the compound so whatever the phosphorus was present it will be oxidized to phosphate then will boil this solution with nitric acid and with ammonium molybdate okay formula for ammonium molybdate is given so after all these procedure if we get a yellow color precipitate that means phosphorus was present in the organic compound so firstly the phosphorus will be oxidized to phosphate and since we have used sodium peroxide so sodium phosphate will be obtained when we will acidify then we will get phosphoric acid h3po4 okay and again when we will heat it with ammonium molybdate then we will get ammonium phospho molybdate and this is yellow in color so this will ascertain that phosphorus was present in the organic compound okay so let's have a revision check so what we did is we did certain tests to ascertain whether 
कार्बन हाइड्रोजन नाइट्रोजन सल्फर हाइड्रोजन और फास्फोरस वाज प्रेजेंट इन द ऑर्गेनिक कंपाउंड और नॉट वाइल डूइंग आवर टेस्ट वी हैव टू वेरी कॉशियस वी हैव टू टेक अप सम ऑफ द प्रिकॉशंस दैट वाइल रूलिंग आउट वेदर एलिमेंट वाज प्रेजेंट और नॉट वी हैव टू लाइक इन केस ऑफ नाइट्रोजन इफ प्रोशियन ब्लू कलर वाज नॉट ऑप्टेंड देन you cannot directly rule out if there is blood red color then it may be because of sodium thiocyanate and then we have to run further test okay like we did so that's all and in our next video we are going to do ab about the quantitative analysis okay and there we will do the estimation of carbon hydrogen nitrogen sulfur hydrogen phosphorus and oxygen okay so see you in next video thank you